The next Starship launch should be happening in a week from today, likely on Pi Day, and this is the third test flight of Starship. So I'm going to be trying to provide some Starship-related news every single day, gearing up for the launch. We learned recently from Essie Robinson Jr. on X that the Texas Parks and Wildlife Commission voted unanimously in favor of a resolution to authorize a land swap with SpaceX. This is something that's been in the works for a while, but now the Texas Parks and Wildlife Commission will acquire 477 acres near the Laguna Atascosa National Wildlife Refuge Bahia Grande Unit. I don't know if I said all that right. Hold up. Wait a minute. Something ain't right. This is an exchange for approximately 43 acres from Boca Chica State Park. Now look at this photo. The tracks in green show the land that the TPWD would provide to SpaceX in the proposed land swap. The land in orange is Boca Chica State Park. So notice where the land in green is located close to. That 43 acres that SpaceX will receive will allow them further expansion of Starbase, which we know that they've been working hard on day and night. We had the bomb dropped on us yesterday that, sorry to those who live in Hawaii, but SpaceX is now aiming for a Starship to land in the Indian Ocean, no longer off the coast of Hawaii, which has been the planned trajectory for quite some time now. Jonathan McDowell shared the estimated Starship IFT-3 planned trajectory, and you can see it here in these images. And I asked Jonathan the question that many of us have on our minds, why did they make the change from Hawaii to the Indian Ocean? Jonathan McDowell says they are testing firing the Raptor for a second burn, possibly a deorbit burn, but of course, as usual, he says they haven't provided any real details of the trajectory, such as perigee, apogee, before and after the burn which he finds annoying. And someone speculated that this leaves a lot of room if the engines fail to fire for the quasi deorbit burn. So they thought that maybe Starship would land in the Pacific, but Jonathan says he still thinks it's gonna land in the Indian Ocean, not the Pacific. The deorbit burn is likely small and the length of the NOTAM or Notice to Mariners area corresponds to the range of complete burn to no burn. I have to say I'm pretty thankful for you guys. You watched my Starship video that I released yesterday and in less than 24 hours, we got that video to nearly 100,000 views. I really appreciate your support and interest and that's why I'm really gonna try to get a video out every single day up to the launch. I plan to leave for the launch and be there all day Wednesday and then obviously Thursday. Now, some of you guys have been asking when, what time is the launch going to be? Just like the last launch, it's likely going to be around 7.30 a.m. Central Time here in Texas. So I will be getting up early, which I, I love. I love getting up early. Sorry, I'm being sarcastic. Also, thank you to all of the people that signed up for my Patreon. I've had a few new followers, and it's something that I don't mention that often. I don't want to come off as annoying, but I realize that I have to let you guys know my needs for the channel, and because I'm doing this full-time, I do need a little bit more support. So if you want to support me, please consider signing up for my Patreon, or you can also do a Venmo transaction donation. Someone actually did that yesterday, and I'm very thankful to everyone who decides to pitch in to make this channel even bigger and better. Now, this is not quite Starship-related news, but eventually Starship will be launching Starlink satellites, so let's talk about it. SpaceX shared that the recent mission of deploying Starlink Starlink satellites brings them to above 10,000 operational space lasers for the constellation. This enables satellites to provide truly global coverage and serve those in the most remote locations on Earth. I cannot believe this. I have been covering Starlink launches since I think there were about 3,000 satellites, maybe even a little less. So the fact that they are over 10,000 operational Starlink satellites is quite incredible. And speaking of which, I hope that my Starlink works for the launch, which is why I need to be there for Wednesday during the day uh, to get this thing going and hopefully be able to use it during my coverage for you guys because if you've never been down to Boca Chica, you must know that service is notoriously bad. And I wanted to show you this quick video from NSF or NASA Spaceflight 
Apparently, SpaceX workers down at Starbase are working on repairing the tiles on Starship. Of course, with the third flight of Starship no earlier than March 14th, hopefully on March 14th, workers are seen inspecting and replacing heat shield tiles on Ship 28, getting it flight ready. So consider subscribing also to NASA Spaceflight if you haven't already. I'm kind of shocked if you haven't already, but they provide great coverage both on X and on YouTube. I often go to them for more information and details and even clarification. So give those guys some support. They do a great job. And they're also going to be on the roof with me at Margaritaville if it's the same situation as the first two launches. So you'll get some great views from us on the top of the roof. Thank you for watching this video. I know that the Starship launch is about a week away, but boy, it sure feels like game time for me. And I have some things as well in the meantime, such as South by Southwest and I'm going to be seeing Icon 3D printed homes on Tuesday. I have a lot going on, so I'm going to be pretty busy, but I'm very excited to hopefully make this Starship launch and my coverage even better than the first two, although it's going to be hard to beat the first one. When do you get to interview May Musk and Kimball Musk on the roof? I don't know if that's going to happen again, but regardless, I'm going to try to make the coverage as good as I can. And I hope that you guys can watch. I should also mention that I finally got the GoPro footage from my Zero G flight. And I'm excited to put part two of the video together for you. I'm working on that right now. But in this video, I'm going to try to give you the most detailed description of what you go through during a Zero G flight partially because I feel like there's not a lot of information about this online. There's a lot of cool videos. You see people looking really cool in zero G floating around, but I feel like no one wants to talk about the fact that some people do get sick and how to mitigate that situation. If you find yourself like me and um, unfortunately not able to enjoy all the parabolas. So I'm going to explain what the experience is like from start to finish when you check in bright and early to the end of the day and what it looks like for you. So I hope that you enjoy this video. I did a brief AMA live stream about this and man, you guys had a lot of questions for me. So I'm hoping that this information will help you not only decide if you ever want to you know, spend the money on this. This is not a cheap thing to do, but also so that you can understand a little bit more what people go through and how disorienting this is. Even if you can handle the nausea aspect, it is pretty disorienting. And I actually think that the G forces are way more intense and way worse than the zero gravity. The transitions are what make this really hard. So anyway, um, this is just a little preview, but I'm really happy that I got the video back from Zero G. And I think you guys are really going to enjoy this. I'm a little bummed because my first video that I did, part one, interviewing three astronauts, including Doug Hurley, who's flown on the first SpaceX crewed mission, including Charlie Duke, who's one of the remaining surviving Apollo moonwalkers, for some reason, this video just didn't get that many views. So if you have missed this video, please consider going back and giving it a watch. I worked really hard on this and I really think you're going to enjoy it. I'm not just telling you this to get a view. I actually really think that if you're a space fan, you won't want to miss it. So please consider going back and checking out that video and you'll have part two pretty soon.